We're good to go? If you're somebody who wants to know more about how you can add value in your career, to your life, to your customers, to the people that you work with, this is a webinar that you want to listen to or this is a video that you want to listen to, tune in to, watch, follow to the end because uh, I'm going to be breaking down value and I'm going to be breaking down some concepts and giving you some ideas as to how you can kind of think about value, come at it from a different perspective and a different context and think about how you can add it in. Uh, if it is in the context of business, this is helping you with our passion and our mission, which is to make organizations great places to work so we can add some more value into our organizations for our team members so that maybe you're going to increase uh, staff retention, uh, make it more attractive for your organization to come and join and be part of. Also, from a customer's experience. So how can you add more value from a customer's experience without it costing you a bomb uh, so that you can deliver more value to your clients and your customers and you can have good long lifetime value for customers. And also, obviously, it makes your organization more valuable, more profitable. Uh, and there's more money left over so that the owners, you, if you like, if you're an owner of an organization, is happy to continue to con keep showing up and keep running the business. So our vision and our mission here at Best Practice is to make organizations great places to work, great places to buy from, and great places to invest in. And we're here to inspire 100 million companies globally to those improvements, which is really exciting. And the way we can do that today is we can talk about value. I was in a really great session last week with an amazing gentleman. His name's Mark Carter. We'll drop the link to his TED Talk uh, below in the comments after we finish this live stream or one of the team can do that while we're watching on the live stream. I think Luke's watching from home today. He's uh, He's got COVID. So uh, half of our team's got COVID this week. So we are struggling uh, on, on half of our team at the moment. Uh, it is a bit of a challenge as this wave of COVID goes through our business. Um, so a few people working from home uh, uh, and, and please everybody get better better soon and, uh, and keep yourselves healthy. Um, so we'll drop the link to Mark Carter's TED Talk. He's got some great stuff. He's got an excellent book called Add Value. It's available on Amazon. Uh, I read it this morning. Again, uh, the last chapter, chapter six, is absolutely fantastic. I can highly recommend it. So he does break down some great principles in his book, Add Value. And I'm going to talk about some of those today. Um, and I just want to give him a massive wrap. He came and spoke to our all of the team members in our business last week. We had a great session uh, on value ourselves. And I thought it'd be great to, uh, to send that message out to you guys. So let's talk just quickly about value and what the benefits are to you and your organization and to what you're doing, either in your career or for your customers. So in your career, for your boss or for your teammates or people that you work with or uh, in your career, it, it creates deeper relationships. And it's about thinking about, I, I guess I live by a philosophy, the service we give to others is the rent we pay for our space on this earth. And I, and I think that that's something that you do need to think about is that, that you know, you, you can't just occupy your space. That's not a right. Um, it's, it's a responsibility to look after your space on this planet and the service we give to others is, is our exchange, if you like. So um, that's something that I kind of live and breathe by. But I want to tell you a quick story. Uh, when I was about, uh, I think I was about 16 and a half, 17 years old. Uh, and for those of you that know roughly how old I am, I'm going to say that's about 1991, 91, 92, something like that. Um, I was working at a corner store, a little corner store in a fishing village, like little village on the side of a river. Um, it was a little store. It was on the side of the river and it kind of had a road behind it. But most of the customers came into our store on boats. So they would come in either people working on, on the river or people holidaying on the river on, you know, little houseboats and, and holiday boats. They would come into our store. There was obviously people with their own little yachts, private yachts. Um, not an affluent place at that time, it certainly is now. It's certainly Super Yacht Central now, um, where I grew up in this little store. And the store is still there. It's called the Cottage Point Kiosk. So I was 16 years old, and I would get up early on a Saturday morning, and I would get in my little, my little boat with a little engine, and I would drive around to this store, and I'd tie up my boat, and I'd walk up the wharf, and I'd walk into the store, and I'd help out and work in that store all weekend. It was like my 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 job, my teenage job to earn some pocket money. Um, you know, we would we would fry up French fries and we'd have what we have here in Australia is meat pies in the pie warmer. Uh, we would make rolls, chicken rolls. We didn't have like a big kitchen to make burgers and things like that, but we, enough food to keep people going. Um, and, and also some things like bait so people could go fishing and some, some groceries, the newspapers. And we would serve coffee and, and scones and jam and cream and little lunches. 
Uh, it was fantastic. And people would come in and it's a lovely little community feel in this little cafe corner store, little mini mart uh, on the side of the river. We also had a bunch of high boats. But this one particular day, I remember it was, it was a lovely morning. The sun was out, no wind, uh, nice and warm. And I could see a yacht coming uh, from way off in the distance. And it took a, about five or 10 minutes to get its, make its way across the bay uh, to pull in and tie up at our wharf. And I could see it coming out the window. So I ran down the, store, the stairs and across the deck and down onto the wharf uh, to receive these people to our wharf. Um, they were regulars. I, I you know, might see them once a month come in and tie up at the wharf. And I remember really clearly seeing the yacht come in and tie up at the wharf. And I remember seeing the, the look on the guy's face. He was a little bit anxious and stressed about parking his yacht against the wharf. And I helped you know, hold it off so it didn't get scratched and damaged by the wharf. And, and I tied it up. And, and, and one of the things I was really good at was, was obviously tying up boats because I was around boats the whole time. So I tied it up. And you could see the, the, the relief on his face when he saw me standing on the wharf ready to help him dock his yacht, a little tiny, probably 30-foot yacht. Um, and his, uh, his partner there, I think might have been his wife, was there as well. And I had a big, put a big smile on my face. It's like, hey, great to see you guys. Your boat's looking amazing. What an incredible day today. I'll just get you tied up. Everything's safe and sound. You're ready to disembark disembark come up into the shop and i'll make you guys a fresh pot of plunger coffee and we'll get you guys going with some scrambled eggs on toast for breakfast um hey would you be interested in the newspaper i just went and picked up the newspapers from up at the next town um, i brought them back in the car and um and we've got some newspapers available i'll make you some fresh scrambled eggs on toast and a fresh pot of coffee come and sit up on the balcony on the chair and you can what you can sit and admire your yacht tied up to our wharf and the look on their face was just pure amazement and excitement and relief and joy. And, and it was at that point in my life that I realized when I put that effort in that I, I was watching them. I was watching their body language and I was watching their, you know, their stance and, and how they're holding their shoulders and, their, and their lo the looks on their faces. And that that was something for them that they was like, actually, I'm really enjoying this. And then you know, probably an hour and a half later, they'd had their scrambled eggs and on toast and that beautiful smell of freshly cooked toast was wafting through our cafe and the beautiful smell of, fresh, of a fresh pot of coffee was wafting through the cafe and, you know, we had this beautiful view of the river and the sun had risen a bit higher and the day was kicking on and I walked them down to the wharf they hopped on their yacht and I untied them and gave them a push so they didn't damage their boat on the wharf and off they went for the rest of the day. Now, I've subsequently known those people for the rest of my life and they still make comments about how good it was to meet me on the end of the wharf on a Saturday or a Sunday morning and then to spend the time, you know, reading the newspaper and enjoying their breakfast. And so I, I figured at that point in time that I could actually significantly uplift somebody's day and and it was at that point in time that I started to realize that actually I can have a positive impact on people's lives and so today I wanted to talk about value because really that was I didn't have to do that they could have tied up to the wharf they could have walked up the stairs they could have come to the cash register they could have sit, looked at the menu and said uh, you know I'll have some coffee and some scrambled eggs I could have not said a single word I could have hit the buttons on the cash register taken their money made their breakfast and basically delivered it to them with very little whatsoever. But instead of saying, would you like fries with that? I was like, let's get you set up with some scrambled eggs. Let's get you set up with some beautiful warm toast. Um, and let's get you set up with a, a, a lovely pot of fresh coffee. And all of those parts are parts to the value of that particular service. And I've, I've kind of had that story in the back of my mind that, you know, giving people a great experience. So what Mark Carter has done, which I think is really interesting in his book, Add Value, uh, and we'll drop a link to that uh, in the comments, is that he's broken down the category. So I'm going to go through them. I've got some notes here behind the camera to make sure that I give you a really, really high quality session this morning. He talks about personal value. He talks about tangible value. He talks about emotional value, service value, and relationship value. And I'm going to go now over the next 10 minutes through each of those categories of value, and we can relate back to my story uh, and, and how you can think about in your work, in your daily life, at home with your family, with your friends, with your amazing other half, if you've got one in life, your partner in life, um, or, or with your customers, how you can think about where you can add some value, uh, value that doesn't cost anything, didn't cost me anything to have a smile, 
didn't cost me anything to upsell um, or, 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 or cross sell what I was doing. Didn't cost me anything to walk down, uh, maybe a little bit of time to walk down and help them into the wharf and tie them up so they felt safe and secure while they were spending some time with us. But what that meant was that, that because they had the great experience, those customers would keep coming back, you know, if not fortnightly, monthly on a regular basis. And we could rely on that. We could, we could continue to run our business because our customers kept returning and they were regular repeat visitors um, and we could expect them almost on time um, and we could prepare ourselves for that. So we could plan, right, we're gonna, we can get eggs because we know we're going to sell them. We can get bread because we, can know, we're gonna, we know we're going to make toast. We can get coffee because we, got, we know we're going to be able to make coffee and we know we're going to be able to make profit you know, because we're going to be able to do those sales and make profit. So customer lifetime value. So I think it's worth thinking about this because it's easier to serve existing customers. In fact, it's fun and it's enjoyable because I loved hanging out with those people. They'd come in, enjoy themselves, big smiles on their faces. And I was king of the world when I was 17 years old, really loving exactly what I was doing and in really enjoying being in that environment um, and, and serving those people. So let's talk about personal value. Think about your why. Think about not just intellectual, um, you know, the intellectual quotient or IQ, you're a level of intelligence, but think about your emotional intelligence and think about, you know, what you can do and, and what you start to realize and how you can help people. And if you picture somebody coming down the street, so you're walking down the street and you picture yourself walking down the street and someone's coming towards you down the street and they've got a frown on their face, maybe they're red faced like beetroot and they're angry you can go almost go, oh my God, that person's angry. I'm starting to feel angry because that person's feel angry. But what if you've got an incredible smile on your face, your shoulders are back, your head's up, you've got a great stride, it's a beautiful day, you're really grateful to be alive. Do you think that you might be actually able to simmer down that anger because you're projecting love and joy and happiness? Absolutely. It's the oil on a rocky ocean. You can smooth out the waters of a rocky ocean. So you can, you can be... You can control your own emotions and then you can have a positive impact. Just like my smiling face, you know, as I bound down the stairs and across the deck, uh, if you want to have a look at the Cottage Point kiosk on Instagram, uh, it's available, it's on Instagram, Cottage Point kiosk. You can see it, you can see the pictures, you can see that amazing environment. And Trent and Angela, who run that business now, all these years later, 25, 30 years later, I have a great time in that great environment. It's all still there. The stairs are there, the decks there, the wharfs there. You can see that amazing view. So you can go and check it out on Instagram. In fact, we might even drop drop the uh, drop the link to um, the Instagram of the Cottage Point kiosk in the comments so you can see that incredible. But lifetime value meant we built great customer lifetime value and I built up the goodwill of that business for someone else. So the owner of that business was able to on-sell that business because it had repeat customers and it had repeat business and it was a great opportunity and it was a great place to be. So personal value was my why. My why, I love putting the smile, that smile on those people's faces. I love helping people have a great experience. I love entertaining. That's my why and that's one of my values. And obviously also one of the things I didn't realize at, at that point in time is I have a huge amount of empathy. It's tough to drive a boat and not damage it. You know, the water's moving and the air's moving and there's wind and waves and all those kinds of things. And, and I had empathy for the guy driving the boat. I was like, you know what? I'm going to run down there and I'm going to help because I can see he's a bit stressed and he's trying to do a few things. And it's not easy to kind of, you know, climb over rails and ropes and guardrails and, and tie up to a wharf. It's tricky to kind of time it right. It's not like parking a car where you can kind of stop and it stays still. If you stop a boat, it keeps moving. I had empathy for that. So in personal value, think about how you can have empathy for the people around you. Okay, I'm going to stop for a second before we go through the other values. We've got a dashboard right here. We're live on YouTube and we're live on LinkedIn. So, aloha, uh, Mihad. I'm I'm assuming that you're uh, you're in Hawaii potentially. So, let me know where in the world you are watching from. Um, and I can see people watching live on LinkedIn there. So, Muhammad, good to see you. Barbara, good to see you. Um, and um, yeah, th I appreciate that. I've actually recently had some coaching on storytelling. Um, I can tell stories, but I've been given a framework to tell stories. So um, I can share that maybe in another lesson because we talk about storytelling. And in fact, I'm going to get that. I'm going to get to that in relationship value in one of the sections of value. So maybe I can break that down for you. Um, I'm working out how to do it. So uh, Adam Dent, ahoy. How's that new boat of yours, Adam Dent? So uh, I'm, I'm pretty keen to get on that trawler and, and check that out. Aaron Jones, good to have you on board. Let me know where you are watching from. Um, and I hope I can help you guys. So 
I'll just quickly revise. Uh, we talked. We're talking about personal value, then tangible value, emotional value, service value, and relationship value. Um, so let me know where you are watching from. And um, and Barbara, good to see you. Virginia in the U.S. Mark, you're in New Zealand. Um, lovely to and um, Terry Hills, Adam. That's correct. Very close to Cottage Point. So um, uh, Adam Dent knows exactly where uh, where I'm talking about down there at the Cottage Point kiosk. Uh, if you ever get to Sydney, Australia. Any of you guys watching from all over the world, you have to go to the Cottage Point kiosk. It is incredible. They do a great, amazing barramundi fish curry. It's absolutely incredible. Um, and Trent and Angela do such a great job down there uh, looking after everybody. So um, big shout out to them. So, yeah, let me know where you are watching in. If you're not watching live, if you're watching the recording, so you're, you're after this live stream, still let me know where you are watching from in the world because I get all notifications of all the comments on all of our videos um, I hope this is helpful for you. Um, the other thing too is if after this event, it really helps me if people kind of see this. So if this has been a valuable session, please hit the share button, either share on LinkedIn or tag someone in the comments. And on LinkedIn, you can type their name and then hit enter and they'll get tagged in the comments and, and they'll get to watch this video if you find it helpful. Okay, let's get onto it. The next one's tangible value. And now in the presentation that Mark gave us, Mark Carter, and I'm talking about his book, Add Value, this morning in the presentation, he's got this little nursery rhyme and it says, uh, dollars, percentages, numbers and time, that is the tangible value nursery rhyme, but the metrics that matter are yours and not mine. How'd I go? Pretty good. <laughs> so um, dollars, percentages, numbers and time are the tangible value nursery rhyme, but the metrics that matter are yours and not mine. And so when we're talking about tangible value, it's, it's kind of the measures one. It's the one we kind of go to when we think add value. And I used to make this mistake. I was, I was sitting in a conference down in Melbourne about, um, oh, it's got to be over 10 years ago now. And there was a guy at the front of the conference and he was kind of leading this business. And I was there down there as a contributor. And he was at me. He's like, we got to add value. We've got to add value. And everyone's like, well, tell us how we're going to add value or how do we measure we add value? And, and really that comes down to you. So I want you to think about, What's the value you're getting out of this session? And I want you to think about, you know, is it dollars, percentages, numbers, and time? Um, maybe it's dollars. Maybe it's how you can add value to your, more value or get ideas for adding value to your customers. And you could measure the success of, of the implementation of that and maybe long-term in, 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 in a higher value, higher average sale value to your customers potentially. Or maybe it's just the, the length of time you spend with your customers or you want to build deeper relationships with your customers or your clients or your teammates or people around you uh, and, and maybe get more word of mouth referrals. So think about the metrics that matter to you uh, in terms of adding value and, and maybe you could post in the comments what would be valuable and I can give you some examples. So, so think about, you know, in terms of adding value, maybe hit me with a question. I've got my great dashboard there. We've been practicing with, with the comments. Hey, Ashley, good to have you on board. And Ashley, thank you very much. I really appreciate uh, the testimonial video that you did for us last week. I, I, really, um, I really, really value that. And, uh, and the team got a lot out of it. So Ash, thank you very much for your recorded conversation with Sarah our high-performance coach here at Best Practice. Okay, tangible value, the metrics that matter are yours and not mine. And we can fall into the trap of thinking we know what people value. And I think the reality is in building a deep relationship with our customers or our teammates or, or people in our business or our industry uh, or our market, um, asking questions. And that's kind of market research, I guess, which is to kind of ask what matters to people and focus on what matters to people. So um, I know... Over time, like sometimes for me, I've been doing these videos now for seven years. Um, you know, at least we started off monthly doing these. Now we do them weekly. You know, through the start of COVID, we were doing them twice a week. Um, sometimes I find it quite frustrating because I get no feedback. But obviously now when I'm getting your comments from you guys, um, and I appreciate that, um, it's, it's like I'm not just talking to a black camera <laughs> or the team here. Um, that, that you, I'm actually adding some value to you guys and you're getting something out of it. So uh, that really helps me. The comments really help me because I know there's people there and I know who I'm talking to and I can actually, um, I can tweak it so that it's, uh, it's customized for you. So tangible value is, is what matters to you. So what's the value to you? What, what do you guys get out of these videos? What do you get out of what I'm doing um, you know, you can let me know because then I can focus on those things instead of just kind of guessing and, and figuring it out. And it's the same with your customers. Ask your customers what they like about your organization. And you can't do that on a form or a survey. Like it's not a survey monkey. 
And it's almost like when you're talking value, you've got to have a tech ban. Like it's not apps, it's not functions, it's not, it's not all these different amazing computer methods or social media or that kind of stuff. It's, 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 hand, it's hand-to-hand combat um, with your customers, with your market, with your teammates and conversations. And that's really about building relationships and value, value in relationships. And I'm going to get to that. So tangible values of metrics that matter are yours and not mine. So that nursery rhyme again, which I quite like, is dollars, percentages, numbers, and time is the tangible value nursery rhyme and the metrics that matter are yours and not mine. So something to think about, it's it's after chapter six in Mark's book. I'd love to help Mark by getting you guys all to purchase his book. So add value. Um, Mark Carter is the author. Um, maybe some, one of the team that's listening can, can throw that link in the comments. Um, I haven't actually physically got a copy of it with me here in the studio right now. There's a box of them downstairs. Uh, and so we'll, uh, but you can Google that and you can find Mark Carter and we'll get a link to his TED talk. Uh, okay. Um, okay. So no further comments. So if you have got specific questions about your business and how you could add value, please hit me with that in the comments. Let's get on to the next one. Emotional value. So uh, personal value, tangible value. The next one is emotional value. So um, emotional value, I took it with the story I just told about that kiosk that I was working at, um, that took you on a journey. And you may remember, you know, you may recall the term that it's not, people won't recall what you said, they'll recall how you made them feel. And so by telling a story, then you can basically take people on an emotional journey and you can take them on a positive emotional journey or a negative emotional journey. So it's how you made them feel and what's the sensory experience that you're taking them through. What are the tactile elements? So if someone's feeling anxious, can you make them feel better? Here we go. Here's the book. Excellent. So um, there's, there's add value. Can we see that in the shop? We should be able to see that uh, somewhere there. Okay. Excellent. Um, so now when we're talking about emotional value, it's, it's personalization for individual people. It's not just a one size fits all. And that's where everybody's thinking, oh, I've got to build a tech app. I've got to build a tech app. I'm going to get into fintech. That's how I'm going to make money and make ridiculous amount of money in the future. That's not going to happen that way. Um, Long-term value, the most valuable companies in the world are building relationships and really being, you know, giving wow factor. Um, and, you know, there's no wow to zero, the accounting system. I don't go, wow, this is amazing. Yes, it's easy to use and it kind of serves my purpose. But if I didn't have to pay tax, I wouldn't have zero. So um, I want you to think about how can you customize your service? How can you help your service? And one of the things that Mark talks about in his, in his talks that he does, and I'd highly recommend booking him for your organization as a speaker to your team. If you're having some kind of internal conference for your people, I highly recommend Mark Carter to come and speak to your team. He charges that it's a service that he provides. I want to add value to him by referring him to you guys. Um, we paid him to come and speak to our team. Um, is what, you know, what's the wow factor? How can it be customized? Now, he customized his talk to suit our team. So how can you customize your service and personalize your service to or your, or your product to your customers? Because it's the benefit of your product or service that your customer is looking for, not the features. So stop talking about features. If you fall into the trap, the biggest trap I fall into sometimes is talking about the features of our products and services and not actually the benefit to you. The benefit to you is that you're in, you feel inspired and you feel a little bit more knowledgeable and you pick up information that you can use to improve your organization. That's the benefit, not the feature. It's not like, I'm live once a week here on YouTube and LinkedIn. That's a feature of what I'm doing. The benefit is that you can come in weekly. Some weeks you're going to miss it. And sometimes you drop off and you might not watch any of our videos for three or four or five or six months. And then you come back and you're like, wow, I keep forgetting to do this. And you get back into a routine and you get weekly nuggets of information that you can use, small tips and tricks that you can use in your organization to keep building value and keep improving what you're doing. And that's a benefit of being in touch with us here at Best Practice. Oh, and by the way, it's on your mobile device or your desktop machine right where you are. You don't have to come and find me to get that information. You just need to find an internet connection. So that's the benefit of doing it, that it's kind of at your fingertips. So um, we need to think about, you know, the, the last thing we need to think about is like leaps in creative faith. So we need to think about innovation. So, but for me, as I kind of contemplate innovation in our business, the best innovations that I come up with is actually when I engage with the customers and I engage with our team members rather than kind of being, you see me do this all the time, don't be a focus group of one. 
are thinking about how you can really add value. And I, and I think that's something that, um, you know, when you focus on people and you spend time in relationships, business relationships, relationships at home, um, then you can focus on that. Okay, so something that I haven't talked about for a long time in emotional value is the five love languages. That's the that's a great book. I've I haven't recommended it for a long time, but uh, the five love languages by Gary Chapman. There's five love languages. Now I want you to think selfishly right now in your life, in your personal relationships right now, which one of these you crave the most. So don't think about anybody else right now. Just be selfish for the next couple of minutes while I talk about the five love languages. You will be craving or value one of these more than anything else. Do you love a well thought out gift? You can't, you know, you think, oh, well, that's amazing. You really look forward to it. Maybe you look forward to birthdays or Christmas or Easter or, or the different holidays throughout the world, you know, where, you, where you're giving gifts or receiving gifts. You really like a well thought out gift. Maybe it's not that. You know, and, and also say, no, nah, it's not that I'm not a gifts person. I'm not a, I'm not a, maybe it's a quality time thing. Maybe you love spelling, spending quality time with friends and family. And the last two years with COVID has been a bloody nightmare for you that you haven't been able to see people that you love and be close to them and in proximity to them and spend quality time with them. So maybe your love language is quality time. Maybe you really like it when people do things for you. Maybe you like being served on and you like being helped out. And maybe you're a mother and you've got a bunch of kids and you really enjoy it when someone helps you with a few little things, that's acts of service. Maybe you like a pat on the back. Maybe you like a hug. Maybe you're really tactile. Maybe you like it when you know, a person close to you touches you. That's touch. And um, the last one on my list is compliments. Maybe you like the validation from people, the compliment or the comments um, the positive nice people nice when when people say nice things to you. So maybe that's you know maybe that's that thing. And so from an emotional value perspective, I want you to think about which one of those do you like the most, and which one is definitely a no. And that's going to give you a bit of an indication of what your love language is. Now here's the secret. Now that's one side of it. The secret side of the five love languages is what's the one you speak. Because we talk about, we try to make bids for connections with people and speak kind of each other's love language. But actually, when we look at it in a different direction, we're missing connections. And that's where relationships often break down is that the love language that you automatically speak is not the love language that someone automatically wants to hear. And so if you can become, you, you will automatically speak a love language. Everybody does. It's one of those five. Either you're a person who buys gifts for people, you're a person that does things for people, you're someone who gives compliments, you're somebody who goes and spends quality time with people, or you are somebody who touches people. You will automatically do, <laughs> it sounds creepy, doesn't it, when you say you're somebody who touches people like randomly on a train or on a bus. I'm just, excuse me, can I touch you? Or actually, sorry, I just... Needed to touch you. That is a bit is a bit creepy, but um, but you will automatically speak a love language. Now the trick is if you can teach yourself to be bilingual and do all of those five love languages or speak all of those five languages, and more importantly, if you can figure out what people's love languages is is or are, then people will feel more connected to you. And that's something that I've been campaigning for a long period of time. So I hope I'm not being too creepy for you guys there who um who are watching online. Uh, so great, Martin, thanks for joining us. Um, thanks, Aaron. Uh, the recording will still be here. Uh, I appreciate you have to drop off, but um, it's available. The recording for this video is going to be available on our YouTube channel as soon as we stop. Uh, the video will be right there so you can keep watching. Uh, it's also available to come back and watch on LinkedIn. Um, and um, would you do a pre-sale of an app if it were a new product and new market? Absolutely, I would, 100%. Aaron Jones, just to answer your question, I absolutely would do a pre-sale. Uh, that's the ultimate validation of successful business is if people will buy your thing before it's ready. Um, so yes, I would absolutely do that. Um, you, and use that to fund further development. So use your customers uh, to, to, to fund your development. Um, okay, so that's emotional value. So if you can speak people's love language, that's going to give them wow factor. They're going to feel connected to you because you're, you're doing the thing that they're craving the most. Okay, let's talk about service value. It's the next one. I've got two to go, service and relationship value. Let's get through service value because I am conscious of time. So get curious about the problem you're solving. I find too often that we jump to solutions mode. It's a human like weakness that we jump in and, and jump into solutions mode. So please focus on getting curious, spend more time in what's the problem that you're actually solving and that's service value. 
walk in their shoes, have some empathy for the situation and anticipate what their next move is. And I remember a time, you know, when I was going to college, um, I had a weekend and, you know, some days of the week and weekend job uh, working with a bricklayer. Um, and I was working on these commercial building sites and I was working really closely with this bricklayer. And I just remember kind of starting and on the first day that I, you know, I got introduced to him and, we, you know, we had a great relationship and a bit of banter and that kind of stuff. But he was getting frustrated with me. Um, and he was saying, you know, I want the bricks here and I want the, the mud, you know, this consistency and, you know, the cement, this consistency. And, you know, I want you to keep the shovel clean and this is how I want you to do things. And I was like, ah, oh, this is crazy, mate. Like, you, you're being very demanding. Like, you, you know, it's, it, it, it's absolutely crazy. And I was getting frustrated and he was getting frustrated. But, but over the next week of kind of working together and then weeks turn into months turn into years of working together, I started to be able to anticipate exactly how he wanted things set up. And then I could get faster at what I was doing. And I could, you know, I learned this lesson that actually I could put a smile on his face with actually going, right, I know how he wants the cement. You know, there's boards he puts the cement on. I know how high he wants them. I know where he wants the blocks and the bricks and how far apart. And he gave his specific measurement using his boots, you know, the bricks away from the wall so he could walk between the bricks on the ground and the bricks he was laying on the wall and the string lines and, and the cement and the barrel of water and the cleaning up and all that kind of stuff. And I could get faster and faster and fitter and fitter. And in the end, we had this really amazing result where the big boss was coming to us and going, oh my God, you guys are laying more bricks than anybody else in the brick laying team. And you're getting really, really fast. And my big boss was like, Kobe, since you've been laboring with Neville, I've never, ever seen Neville lay as many bricks as he does when you guys are working together, like your super successful team. And it's making my business more profitable as a result. So um, that was big David Argles for the people that know me and know that I used to work for him, that, um, you know, we were, we were doing bricklaying, commercial bricklaying. And I learned this amazing lesson of helping Neville to set up his workplace how he wanted it set up, not doing it how I wanted it done, doing it how he wanted it done. So that was my service value to him. Um, and the last value is relationship value. And relationship value is really interesting. Like I know there's lots of followers on my Instagram account and LinkedIn and that kind of stuff, but this deep relationship I can build with you guys by seeing the dashboard because I can see your comments up there on the screen um, and helping you guys is my advice to you is to focus and Mark Carter's advice, and I agree with it, is to focus on your 150. So ring every one of your friends for their birthday. Now, there's 365 days in the year, and if you ring every, you know, some of your friends, you know, you're going to have multiple friends birthdays on any given day and two of my good friends had their birthdays yesterday and I sent them both text messages late last night to wish them a happy birthday and with a nice little comment as well it wasn't just happy birthday there was like a little bit of banter in it as well um, and phone calls and that's relationship value so how many customers can you call and, and kind of call on them and say hey how are you going happy birthday what are you up to just some of those old school values and the story I heard told in our office yesterday in a meeting was that Jackie, one of our recruiters in our recruitment business, she convinced her dad to change Christmas cards to an email. And he used to handwrite all the Christmas cards for all their customers. Now, they, they convinced him to change. They said, oh, it's inefficient. It takes too much time. It's such a waste. And then she realized last week that that was the wrong thing to convince her dad to stop it because eventually his business, it didn't die, but it declined. And, you know, while he was doing some of those things, they were the, some of the successful ingredients that helped him build his business by handwriting a Christmas card every year. And so I was like, yeah, you know, I remember doing that. And I was literally this morning thinking, how can I write 950 Christmas cards? You know, I'm going to have to start in November, <laughs> essentially, and get the team to help me. I'm going to need somebody to write the envelopes. I'll write the personal messages, but we've got to go get 900 cards, 900 stamps, 900 envelopes. I'm going to need some help, but I'm going to personalize that because I do like wishing people their, you know, happy birthday. I do like calling, if I've got time, calling people for their birthday. I do like just randomly going through my contacts list in my phone and calling people and just saying hi. I love doing that. That's relationship value. So now I'm starting to realize that that's kind of a, 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 a strength that I've got that was unconscious. So I want you to be conscious about that and also conscious about random acts of kindness. Um, the last thing about relationship value, I think it's important to resolve the unspoken. If there's things that haven't been said that need to be said, then just say, look, here's the script. Hey, Cam, um, there's something that's been on my mind. I'm not very good at having uncomfortable conversations, but I feel there's something that I need to get off my chest, apologize for, address, talk about. I'm not really very good at that, but it's something that I need to do. So bear with me. 
Um, I just wanted to, you know, resolve something that's been unspoken between us. Um, so bear with me. I'm not very good at it. I apologize, but I really, it needs to be said. Um, I, I don't feel great about it. I don't think you feel great about it. Let's talk about it. Um, and that's a great script for you to use, you know, and, that, and that's about relationship value. Okay. So let's quickly summarize value. I'm conscious of everybody's time. How long have we been going for? Half an hour. Okay. Um, let's talk about it. So the summary is um, the, 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 the categories of value, if you like, are personal value, tangible value, emotional value, service value, and relationship value. And we've just been through those. You can't, this has been recorded for you. So you can go back and have a think about that. How can you add value in each of those categories for your work colleagues? How can you add value in each of those categories for your customers? How can you add value in each of those categories for people in your family, for the most significant person in your life, maybe for your partner, for your children, for your parents? How can you add value in each of those categories? And those categories are personal value, tangible value, emotional value, service value, and relationship value. When it comes back to making money, in business. And at the end of the day, that's what binds us all together. We're on, you know, professional platforms and we're talking about value, if you like, dollars, um, look, customer lifetime value. So it's easier to look after existing customers than to pay to onboard more customers. And if you can add value, when value exceeds price, I've said this before, when value exceeds price, cash flows downhill. People value, I value this shirt more than the money that I had in my hand. And, and the shirt's worth more to me, mainly because it doesn't offend you because I'm sitting here naked, you know. <laughs> but, you know, the shoes I'm wearing, the, the iPhone, you know, this iPhone, this iPhone makes, helps me make millions of dollars every year. So the $1,000 iPhone is ridiculously cheap in comparison to the value I get from it. The value of this particular book for $30 is going to create an incredible amount of value in your organization, for your people, for your customer. This book is going to make you profit. And so for 30 bucks, like you only got to make $30 more profit to basically pay for the book. So, and if your margin is 30%, you, if this book can help you sell another hundred bucks worth of stuff, it's worth spending the $30 of profit that you'll make on the book. In fact, I, I, I can guarantee, I know this book is going to make me millions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars potentially in the rest of my career, just reading it and flicking through just chapter six at the back is incredible. So, 30 bucks, like when we talk about value, like, oh my God, the intrinsic value in this thing is incredible. A, I've talked about it before, the book, The Hard Thing About Hard Things by Ben Horowitz. I reckon that book saved me a million dollars at the beginning of the pandemic. Like I read a piece of advice, I implemented it and I avoided a disaster. It was incredible. So I want you to think about that and how what you do for your customers can help create an incredible amount of value. And, and ideally, hopefully it's going to help you have deeper, longer term, more financially valuable relationships with your customers and your teammates. I hope this has been super helpful. Um, you can obviously say I'm passionate about the topic. I've really enjoyed presenting this one to you guys this morning. I hope, um, I hope it does add some value for you guys. Um, I'm here to answer questions if you've got any. Um, uh, yes, I studied that book when I was at a counseling course and it's really great to know them all. 100% Barbara, five love languages, absolutely one of my most favorite books ever. Um, okay, so thank you, thank you to everybody that was watching live on LinkedIn. Thank you to everybody who's been watching live on YouTube. I really value your time. I uh, appreciate coming in and, and being part of the audience and, and watching this. It would really help me a lot if you hit the like button. Uh, really help me a lot if, you, if you're on YouTube. You can hit the share link. Just below the video, there's a share button. Hit that share button. You can copy that link and you can paste it into an email. You can paste it into a text message. You can paste it into a whole bunch of different places and you can send it to people. You can send it on WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger and share this particular video. So if this video has been helpful and it's something that would be helpful for your team in your business, uh, it's something I'd really love to help with. We've got a great team here at, in our organization, in our group called Next Practice, and we can workshop this with you. Uh, we can help connect you with Mark Carter if that's something that you'd like to do. Uh, we can facilitate that. We're going to be running a conference next year and I hope to have him on our stage as a guest. So I really look forward to that. And if anyone can get here for that event, that would be fantastic. We'll also broadcast it live. Uh, Barbara, I am uh, always grateful for your participation and for your kind words. Um, and I hope my team gets well quickly because we're struggling. Yes, we're on about half at the moment. So, uh, so lots of people. We had a conference last week and uh, we had, you know, we, we, first time we've had everybody together for three years. We flew people in interstate and I think they've picked up COVID traveling through airports and 
and public transport, unfortunately. So I th our event was pretty good. Uh, we don't think we've shared it at the event, but it's just the getting the to and from, unfortunately. So, uh, But it was really nice last week to have everybody together. Was, I, I mean, my team sees value in that relationship value, building bridges. Lots of people that have joined best practice during COVID that have never met anybody before. They've just worked from home for two years. So um, that was really good. So, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I sincerely appreciate everybody's time on LinkedIn and YouTube. You know how it goes. If you don't see me out here on Instagram, if you don't see me on TikTok, the TikTok account is going crazy. Uh, lots of stuff happening on the TikTok, TikTok account is blowing up. So go follow me on TikTok if you haven't done that. If you don't see me on LinkedIn, you'll definitely see me right here next time on Best Practice TV. Same time, same place right here next week. We're weekly Australian Eastern Standard Time at 11 a.m. I think it is, Cam, for 30 minutes, 40 minutes with a great topic to help your organization to be a great place to work, to help your organization to be a great place to buy from and improve your customers' experience, and more importantly, to help your organization to be a valuable asset that makes profit, that helps you to continue feel meaningful, worthy, worthwhile, and valued, and continue to show up and grow your business every day. So my name's Kobe Simmons. I'm the CEO of the Best Practice Group of Companies. And if you need some assistance or you're interested in what we talked about here and you want to know more information, go check out bestpractice.biz forward slash services. You can see what we do. And if you've got more questions, paste them in the comments below and I will see you right here next time on Best Practice TV. Bye for now.